Hi everyone, my name is Josh Langfis, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about getting more from existing tools uh, using the sleep items on the Adolescent General Behavior Inventory and the Youth Self Report um, to measure sleep problems and showing how they re relate to mood disorders diagnoses in, in children. Um, I want to thank Division 42 for uh, inviting us to speak today and um, and of course this work wouldn't be possible without my collaborators Yen Ling Chen, Jess Janos, Jen Youngstrom, Bob Finling, and uh, Eric Youngstrom. Um, so first let me tell you a little bit about who I am because uh, I think that'll be helpful for understanding this work. I'm a fifth year clinical psych PhD student at UNC. Um, my clinical experience in, includes a lot of assessment, but also um, therapy. I've worked with children, adolescents, and adults, and my research is really on um, mood disorders and reactive aggression, kind of uh, distinguishing between the two of those um, from an uh, evidence-based assessment lens. Um, our lab and my work in particular all focuses on fixing the leaky pipeline, helping uh, research get to clinicians. Um, and um, my particular angle on that is in uh, measurement, psychometric scale development, um, trying to improve the quality of research on free measures um, so that uh, they can compete with the ones that you have to pay money for. Um, and there's two things that I hope you get take away from today's talk. Um, one is that sleep problems are worth assessing. But um, adding a whole new measure uh, has trade-offs, as you probably know. Clinicians have to be judicious about the time that they spend on intakes, and um, adding narrowband measures for specific issues that are part of presenting concerns um, takes up valuable time. Um, and so I, the second thing I want you to get out of this is that we can get more from existing measures to measure sleep. Um, the two examples that I'm gonna talk about today are the um, Youth Self Report and the Adolescent General Behavior Inventory. These are two very different measures, um, but they both have uh, items measuring sleep uh, embedded in them. And um, so I wanna show you how we can uh, look at those items and provide evidence of reliability, uh, reliability and validity for um, uh, for, for examining those items. Um, and we have two samples uh, fortunate enough to be able to show that evidence in. So first, why, why focus on assessing disturbed sleep? Well, as you probably know, um, it's pretty common. It's impairing, um, it's related to mood disorders, but it might not be the target of treatment, at least initially, right? Um, people coming into a clinic uh, might be uh, concerned about disruptive behavior or depression or anxiety, but sleep is often um, both a byproduct and sometimes a maintaining factor um, for those concerns. It's also challenging to assess in part because it's multidimensional. Um, Different aspects of sleep disturbance include having difficulty falling asleep, having difficulty staying asleep, waking up in the middle of the night, having um, variable um, sleep times, bedtimes, um, also thing, parasomnias like nightmares and um, uh, enuresis, nocturnal enuresis can disrupt sleep. And so there's lots of different facets that might be clinically relevant. Um, some work has suggested that uh, there are two dimensions to sleep problems that are worth paying attention to for clinical purposes. Um, uh, uh, Watson and Koffel have called these uh, lassitude um, and insomnia. Lassitude is basically feeling sleepy during the day and needing more sleep, and insomnia is the opposite, um, uh, having difficulty sleep or, or sleeping or um, having more energy or, or not needing as much sleep. And you can see how those might be related to different areas of psychopathy. Um, now, many uh, tools already exist for uh, measuring sleep disturbance, and I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you about them. Um, we, we have validated narrowband measures uh, for, for sleep disturbance. The Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index is one. Um, it asks about onset, sleep duration, um, uh, wake up times, hours of sleep per night. It's very helpful. But it's also four pages long. Um, and adding a measure like this to an intake process might create undue burden to a client, particularly if it's not a presenting concern. Another approach to uh, assessing sleep on an intake could be to look at critical items on existing measures, right? <clears throat> so for example, here's the um, CBCL, a parent report, uh, the uh, child behavior checklist, a parent broadband parent report measure. It has an item related to sleep 
overtired without good reason. Um, so you could just look at one item and see if that flags. The uh, problem with having one item is that um, single items are, uh, don't have as much validity as scales. Um, and more importantly, they aren't as reliable. There can be error variants. There can be people responding to that item because of something particular to that item and not necessarily um, because of the overall thing that we care about, which is um, sleep disturbance. So what I'm hoping to show today is how we can strike the optimal balance here. Um, take a scale that has several sleep items embedded in it, hopefully a scale that you've already administered, and pull those items out and examine the reliability and validity of that sleep factor or that sleep subscale on the measure. So let me tell you about the current study. So let me tell you about the current work. We, uh, in this study, we had 688 youth, ages 11 to 18, and their parents. Um, and uh, they were recruited from two different samples. One was an academic medical center, and one was a community clinic. Now, these settings had vastly different referral patterns in terms of diagnoses, as well as demographics. Um, there were a lot more, for example, mood disorders in the academic medical center and a lot more disruptive behavior disorders in the community clinic. Um, and participants, um, uh, youth and their parents, completed various measures. The, the youth, of course, completed the adolescent general behavior inventory in its entirety, as well as the Achenbach Youth Self-Report. These are the measures from which we extracted the sleep items. The GBI has seven sleep-related items on it, and the YSR has six. And then the parents also completed um, clinical symptom interviews, the CDRS, that's the Child Depression Rating Scale, and the YMRS, the Young Mania Rating Scale, um, for depression and hypomanic symptoms. And, and they also completed a, con a consensus diagnosis process using the KSATs. Um, so we had pretty, pretty good research quality diagnosis for all these kids. Um, So let me say a few things about these scales for anybody not familiar with them. The Achenbach Youth Self-Report is a commonly used broadband measure. It costs money to administer. It's got 112 problem items on it, and the items themselves are short phrases that describe um, symptoms, and the respondent rates those on a scale from 0 to 2, where 0 is um, uh, never or not true, and 2 is often or very true. It's got six sleep-related items on it. And I'll show you those stems uh, in a moment. The AGBI, the Adolescent General Behavior Inventory, is less commonly used. It's, it's focused on um, assessing mood disorders. It's got a, a hypomanic biphasic scale and a depression scale that are, uh, have been validated on there. It's free to use, which is a, a real benefit. Um, and uh, but the full measure is pretty long. It's uh, it's not quite as long as the YSR, but it's still got 73 items, and the items themselves comprise um, uh, uh, sometimes multiple questions in one, um, and the reading level is pretty high. Um, which uh, so, and those are also rated on a scale from um, uh, zero to three, where zero is uh, never and three is often or very often. Now, in order to uh, assess the validity and reliability of the sleep items on these scales, we went through a pretty rigorous analytic process. Um, first, we tried to assign items to scales based on um, parallel analysis and exploratory factor analysis. This was just seeing which items, like, were there, what were, do the sleep items themselves, the six items on the YSR or the seven items on the GBI, are do those most likely comprise one symptom? Uh, uh, scale or more than one. Um, and then we use the principal loadings of the EFA to assign the items to the scales. We then used, um, then to assess for evidence of reliability, um, we, I used uh, IRT models, item response to theory models, and classical test theory statistics like um, total item total correlations and lambda G6 for anybody who's familiar with those. And, um, and then we cross-validated the, those sc the scales that we found in um, across the two samples to make sure that the scales were measuring the same thing in each sample. Um, and finally, we looked at correlations between scores on the um, scales we discovered and uh, important clinically relevant variables. And I'll be talking about each of these things as we go along. So let me tell you about the results. 
Um, first, uh, for the adolescent general behavior inventory, um, <clears throat> two factors emerged, a lassitude and an insomnia factor. Um, lassitude, again, related to feeling tired and having increased need for sleep, having trouble sleeping because of feeling sad or depressed. We also had an insomnia factor, which was trouble sleeping because of being overly happy, having no need for sleep, waking up too early or waking up in the night and having trouble sleeping. These are summaries of the items. The actual um, measure itself is available for free online, and I'll have a link to that at the end of the um, presentation. Um, these factors were pretty highly correlated with one another, and um, they showed a good invariance across both samples. They performed similarly across both samples, and, and it had a fairly wide range of reliability. Um, so uh, it reliably measured uh, sleep problems from um, just a little bit below average all the way up through about um, two standard deviations above average. In contrast, the um, youth self-report also showed two factors, but they weren't very well defined. Um, they were, the items did break into one of those measuring more lassitude versus insomnia symptoms, um, but the dotted lines here show that several of the items did not load substantially on the factors. Um, and we can talk about why that might be. Um, first of all, there's fewer items here. The two items that didn't load might relate to like a potential third factor, like parasomnias, as you can see, um, which we might call parasomnias, nightmares, uh, or talking or walking in sleep. Um, but there really aren't enough items to substantiate that factor or the ones that did pop out. Um, CFA showed extremely poor fit statistics and, um, and item response theory analysis um, showed pretty, pretty uh, poor reliability, except for item 100. Item 100 was simply the prompt trouble sleeping. And it turns out if you ask people that question, you can actually get some pretty good information. I'll come back to that in a little while. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about the criterion correlations that we found in this sample. First, let me orient you to this, um, this table. Um, here we have columns for each of the sleep-related scales that we measured, uh, that we discovered. The GBI insomnia and the GBI lassitude scales on the right. We also included um, scores from uh, what we call the GBI all sleep and the YSR all sleep scales. Those scores represent, if you just summed up all of the sleep-related items on the scale, and didn't try to break it into lassitude or, or insomnia. We didn't do that for YSR because, as I showed before, it didn't really factor very well into two scales. So this provides a point of comparison between um, the two, even though the YSR didn't factor. And then on the left, we have the YSR total. That's the total problem scale from the um, youth self-report. That's if you sum up all of the items. And here it provides a measure of overall symptom severity um, or psychopathology. Now you might notice on the right, we also have columns labeled partial. Um, those are partial correlations looking at the incremental validity of the two uh, GBI sleep subscales, lassitude and insomnia, over and above the YSR total. So in other words, how much variability in the criterion variable is explained, or what's the association with the criterion variable when you remove the association from YSR total problems. Um, so over and above overall psychopathology or symptom severity. Um, and that's, a, again, a measure of incremental validity for that scale. So let me just tell you about a few of these um, because we've got a lot of numbers here. Um, the GBI insomnia scale significantly correlated with presence of any mood disorder uh, diagnosis and with uh, 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 symptoms on the uh, young mania rating scale, that's a hypomania rating scale, as well as bipolar spectrum diagnoses. It wasn't significant, there wasn't evidence of incremental validity over and above the YSR, but that's pretty impressive given that that's um, uh, five items versus 100, uh, uh, well, that's five items versus 73, or versus 112 on the YSR. So similar validity, but much shorter scale. Um, <clears throat> in terms of convergent validity for s measuring sleep contract constructs, there was evidence that um, all of our sleep um, scales measured sleep in some form um, because they correlated with the sleep-specific items on the YMRS and CDRS interviews, um, as well as significantly with the CDRS interview overall. Uh, the exception here being the YSR all sleep scale didn't significantly correlate with um, YMRS sleep items. Again, providing evidence that the y YSR sleep, all sleep scale probably isn't 
uh, a great scale to use. Similarly, in the community sample, um, we see those associations, uh, that convergent evidence of validity correlations with the um, uh, the CDRS and YMRS sleep items, although the correlations are somewhat attenuated for the um, uh, mood disorder specific diagnoses. So what does all this mean? Let's take a look. So can we get more from existing scales? Yes, I think we can. The GBI items did show promise as a standalone scale, both in terms of the all sleep scale when you just sum up all seven items and in terms of uh, breaking it into lassitude and insomnia factors. In contrast, the YSR did not form a cohesive scale, but you could do worse than just looking at item 100 as a critical item and, or asking the person, do you have trouble sleeping? Both scales performed about as well in criterion correlation. And in terms of clinical use, um, here are some takeaways. So what you can do is add up the, uh, the ratings for the items on each scale on the GBI, that's items 5, 18, and 52 for lassitude, insomnia is 15, 25, 31, and 37. Uh, consider using a POMP scale or a percent of maximum possible. Um, so adding those up and dividing by the total possible score um, for each of those scales, or if you're using the, the full scale, um, dividing by the, uh, uh, the, the total possible for the full scale. Um, and this could be used as an index for reliable change um, because uh, about a two point difference would be significant in terms of um, test retest. Again, for the YSR, just looking at the trouble sleeping, sleeping item is probably the way to go. So are these measures as accurate as sleep specific ones? Probably not, but they could be helpful for flagging concerns not reported on initial interview, especially if this information is already gathered and you could follow up with a sleep specific measure if needed. Um, and it could also be helpful for tracking treatment progress. So I want to thank you all for listening. Um, if you scan that code on the right or go to the URL, you can get materials from this presentation as well as all the other presentations. Um, there's my contact information. Thank you so much.